We're in a stage of uh, higher fighting and, and sort of survival, as it were, to make sure we get through the, the immediate health crisis. That's where we currently are. But this is also a good time to start planning and thinking ahead of the recovery that will follow. Some of those actions that we will need, you know, they need a little bit of lead time. And so we can start planning uh, what the right emergency packages, the right investment packages would be. It's increasingly clear we're not we're not headed for a V-shaped recovery. There's just way too much wealth destruction that's occurred uh, within households in order to, to make that to make that viable. So this this will be a, a decade long uh, effect, uh, but it can be an opportunity. And that if we reset our expectations about what we're trying to achieve with the economy, then we have a, a new starting point for you know every marginal dollar of investment that's made by corporations and made by governments. Uh, should be through the lens of the economy that we're trying to create. One thing that fascinates me is the, the difference between the, the COVID crisis and the climate crisis. Both are called an emergency. Um, the, the COVID-19 response has been really very, very quick and very deep and very decisive. Um, you know, We've turned the way we do business, the way we worked around within within days or weeks. The climate crisis, which is an emergency that, that probably is of a similar proportion, but it's a, a more sort of chronic one rather than an acute one. Um, a lot of councils, companies, governments have declared the climate emergency in the course of last year. But the kind of action that followed from those declarations has been very, very different uh, in the sense that we pretty much sort of continued doing normal things. So it's instructive to see how the two emergencies have triggered a different reaction. Because we're entering into a situation around the climate crisis, which we need trillions of dollars of new capital expenditures towards uh, renewable energy and other forms of, of low carbon infrastructure. And without uh, a real clarity about the triggers that make the capital markets responsive to those demands by government, uh, we're not going to we're not going to make it. What people resent, and has been a, a big break in the momentum towards uh, climate friendly investments, is a lack of transparency, lack of transparency about uh, what what's needed, uh, a lack of transparency about how government expenditures are supporting it, and a lack of transparency around the subsidies that continue to perpetuate the system. Have. So I think radical transparency in all of those realms would help a lot in terms of aligning. For me, transparency in, 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 in action is, is, is crucial. There's a good test or three tests that people use for a good economic stimulus package. It has to be timely, targeted and temporary. And there are a lot of zero carbon measures that are all those things uh, re, you know re, the building stock that needs energy efficiency investment that reads rehabilitating that is that falls into that category investment in transport infrastructure charging points uh, in transport uh, flat defenses they, those are all investments that we urgently need that will give us a, a zero carbon climate resilient future